but if you start the works then that permission exists forever essentially if you're doing a rear extension say and you have and you don't really have the money to complete the extension just get some money together to start it so dig some trenches lay some foundations make it clear that what you're doing has started and if it started then you have all the time in the world to build it out starting the works is really important a lot of people forget that even in professional circles you know planning consultants and architects will scramble to a local council to try and get all their stuff in place to show that their permission started because if they miss that permission it's very very expensive and it's, I still find it amazing how often that happens so starting the work doesn't really add value but it makes sure value is kept on that site forever and if you want to learn more about the planning process and how you can unlock value out of any property click the link below to learn more so if you're new to the planning world and you're looking at ways to add value to a property this video is going to run through five ways that you can add value to a property some of them are pretty obvious some of them might not be so obvious but a lot of people don't know about them and hopefully this video will kind of be a toolkit that you can use next time you look at a property so the first and most obvious one is extensions you can do extensions to both residential and commercial properties depending on which type of extension you want to do whether it's residential or commercial there are slightly different things that you need to consider with residential extensions the best thing that you have available to you is permitted development rights permitted development rights basically allow you to add right now a crazy amount of floor space if the conditions are right to add to your property which will massively increase the value and we're talking about rear extensions side extensions roof extensions you can add dormer windows and you can also add a little thing that will add the value of your property a little bit so things like hard standing areas you can also do things like outbuildings i know that's not an extension typically but it falls under permitted development rights and the amount that you can do it are huge and when it comes to residential extensions there are a few things you need to keep out keep an eye out for if you're looking at a property and you want to think about whether or not it's a good investment so the first thing you need to look out for and this a lot of people get confused by what this is but article 4 directions article 4 directions are a way that a council can restrict certain types of permitted development rights so quite often people say oh it's in an article 4 area so i can't use it without actually understanding what that means so an article 4 direction is a specified area that the council designates that is going to prevent certain types of permitted development rights. So it doesn't mean that all permitted development rights are removed in that area. It just means the ones listed are removed. So it's quite common, for instance, that particularly in London, councils will have Article 4 directions on big parts of the borough that prevent office to residential conversion because a lot of councils don't want to lose their office stock. That doesn't mean that you cannot do permitted development right extensions. So that's something really to keep an eye out for. So when you find out if you're in an Article 4 direction or not, hopefully not, if you do, if you are in an Article 4 direction, you need to find out what the detail of that is. Permitted development comes from a document called the General Permitted Development Order. So basically what the Article 4 direction will say is it will say it restricts this class of permitted development and you need to find out what that permitted development is. Planning is made very complicated by lots of jargon and acronyms and stuff like that. But as long as you know where to look, at, and these videos will help you do that, then it's very, very simple. If you're in Article 4 direction, find out what it's preventing, and then look at that, correspond that with the general permitted development order, and then you will find out whether or not you can do that permitted development right or not. The other thing to know is, that, are you in a conservation area? Generally, you can do less with extensions in conservation areas because they're trying to protect the character of that area you know if you do a bunch of extensions all around the property you could really affect the character of the whole conservation area so, so permitted development rights are slightly more limited in conservation areas listed buildings you cannot do permitted development rights with listed buildings it's just a rule of thumb you can apply for anything you want the key thing to think about here though is don't try and be a hero so when it comes to rear extensions or any type of extensions a lot of people think oh, I'll just apply to the council and I'll get it they think they know better but have a look in your local area if there are no signs of huge extensions in your local area there's a reason why because everyone wants to make money from property the best way to add value to property is by adding more floor space uh, and if you don't have examples of big extensions in your local area then there's going to be a reason why the other way you can have massive value to a property is changes of use this can get slightly more technical, but the opportunities available and the amount of value it can add are massive. Now, there are some types of changes of use now that you can do under permitted development rights. The reason why permitted development rights are so ding for someone as a beginner 
is because it's less complicated. The general permitted development order lists out what you can and can't do and what you need to do in order to make something acceptable. So right now there's a class within the permitted development order called class MA and that allows you to change commercial to residential. That used to be, it just used to be office to residential but now permitted development rights have been expanded so much that you can add and it's retail, office, gyms, pressures are thrown in there. Lots of, lots of things within class E allows you to change from commercial to residential. That opens up huge swathes of property that wasn't possible before. So the opportunities that you can do with permitted development rights are very good. Like extensions, you can apply for anything you want. If you want to apply for a change of use, you can do that. But generally speaking, there are a couple of things to look out for. For instance, if an Article 4 direction is in place and you cannot fit from that permitted development right, then you will need to apply. Now, if you are changing use from, say, office to residential, most councils ask for marketing evidence as to why that's acceptable. So you'll need to show them that I've marketed the property for two years and if you've not got any interest from potential tenants or buyers, then that's enough evidence to convince the council that yes, okay, it's okay to go to residential. So the other way that you can add value to a property is through certificates. Now this takes quite a lot of organization in the lead up to an application. So quite often what people use certificates for is if they want to use what's called the four year rule, you may have heard of that, or the 10 year rule. The four year rule applies to residential stuff, Nothing else is 10 years. If you want to use a certificate for a residential property, you're using that to demonstrate that the alterations that you've done are more than four years ago. So if you've done a rear extension, side extension, or any change to a property, it doesn't really matter what it is, then you will use the four year rule to demonstrate that it's okay. And what that means is looking at things like dated photos, builders receipts, uh, completion certificates, emails appointing someone, any correspondence that demonstrates the use of that work has been done more than four years ago. The thing about certificates is the onus is on the applicant. You can't just say, oh, I've submitted, I've done this four years ago and let the council decide for themselves because it will be refused. You, the onus is on the applicant. So if you've done something more than four years ago, you need to have all your records in place to show that that's possible. Now the same goes with the 10 year rule. So this is a lot more onerous, but what people use this for is for things like HMOs. So if someone has a property, but they changed it to an HMO without planning permission, then you will need to demonstrate 10 years worth of evidence that that has been an HMO or vice versa, an HMO to a, a residential property, 10 years is in place. You'll need to show tenancy records, you'll need to show floor plans, dated floor plans, because an HMO obviously is, is to do with shared facilities. So dated floor plans, again, construction certificates, emails, correspondence, dated photos, voting records, council tax records, that you think that a planning officer would look to find out whether or not what you're saying is true. If you cover all those bases, then you can demonstrate that it's true, then you're in a good spot. But it does require a lot of work. If you see a property and it's, you know, something's happened, they've changed the use with, and, it, they, and there's not a clear planning permission in place, just make sure that you get all the information uh, before you go about buying something or before you go any further because it is a lot of work. And you, well, it's not so much that it's a lot of work, it's just that it's a lot of organization that you need to have it's quite simple stuff but if you don't have the information then it's likely that it's not true what you're saying so keep an eye on that it's a lot of organization you need but it can add immense amounts of value because a lot of people would love to get permission from an HMO but you can't get it through planning permission but if you've done it done it anyway you don't actually need to apply for anything you're just demonstrating that what you've done was more than 10 years ago so planning can't get involved basically so keep that in mind now the other one the other way you can add value to a property is a bit of a ninja tactic that I don't think many people know about and you can implement old permissions so if you see a site that got permission and the permission is lapsed lapsed means that three years has passed and you can no longer build out that permission if that has happened if you have a site that's got a planning permission more than four years old that's an interesting thing to look at because Yes, you will need to apply for planning permission again, but if the planning policy in that local area hasn't changed, then it's very, very likely that you can just apply again and get permission. If you find a site that's got planning permission for two houses, but it was never built out at all, you think that the opportunity is gone, just check the local policies. If the same policies are in place that were in however many years ago, 
then you've got a very good chance of getting planning permission for that again. That's not to say that a new planning policy framework is in place, you can't do it. It just means that you can almost copy and paste the original application at very little work to yourself, use it, and then get permission for your property that was already in place. Last one is, uh, it's not so much a way to add value, but it's to make sure that the, the value that you've added is put in place. It's because a lot of people, and you'll be surprised how often this happens, people get permissions for things and they just think, oh, I'm golden, I've got the permission in the bag, I'm sorted. When it comes to it, I'll, I'll build it out. But you'll be surprised how many applications come to the council whereby suddenly people are scrambling to get their permissions in place. If you're dealing with a small, if you're dealing with a residential property, the rule of thumb is that you need to implement that permission within three years. And what that means is that you need to start the works. So if you don't start the works in those three years, then that permission's gone and you need to reapply. And obviously what comes with that is if you employed an architect or consultants fees to do that or application fees you need to do all of that all over again and it can be a very costly exercise depending on the application but if you start the works then that permission exists forever essentially so if you're doing a rear extension say and you have and you don't really have the money to complete the extension just get some money together to start it so generally what that means is that generally dig dig some trenches lay some foundations make it clear that what you're doing has started and if it started then you have all the time in the world to build it out so starting the works is really important a lot of people forget that even in professional circles you know planning consultants and architects will scramble to a local council to try and get all their stuff in place to show that their permission started because you know if you think about all the big the big sites that, that are based off huge loans from banks and investment companies if they miss that permission it's very very expensive and it's i still find it amazing how often that happens so starting the works like i say doesn't really add value but it makes sure that your value is kept on that site forever so those are the ways to add value to a property through the planning system there are many more and I can go on, but those are the kind of ones that come to mind right now for this video. They can add tremendous amounts of value. So even if you just take one of those options away from this video, then you're in a really good place because a lot of people forget about the opportunities that are available in planning. Like say, you, there are permitted development rights that you can use. You can apply for anything. You just need to have the right information. Don't forget certificates. You just have to have all your information ready in place to show the council that what you've done is true. Old permissions, very, very useful way of adding value to a site. If the permission's gone, there might be an opportunity where you can just reapply and re redo that permission. And lastly, make sure you start the works. If you don't start the works in time, your permission lapses and then you need to reapply and do it all over again, which can be very expensive. So I hope you found use out of that.